One, the papacy is unbiblical. It is unbiblical. There is not one tiny shred of evidence in Scripture for the papacy, nor is there any evidence for cardinals, bishops, priests, nuns. It's all an invention of men and demons to create an illusion of spirituality and an illusion of transcendence. It was all developed by evil people, satanically led to create a false religion that would be the enemy of the truth. The appeal is because of the power, the prestige, and the money. Do they try to support the papacy from the Bible? Yes. Listen to this. Again, this is their theology from Ludwig Ott, Fundamentals of Roman Dogma. Christ appointed the Apostle Peter to be the first of all the apostles and to be the visible head of the whole church by appointing him immediately and personally to the primacy of jurisdiction. Now what they do is go back and say Peter was the first pope appointed by Christ. If, says the Vatican Council, if anyone says, this was back in 1823, if anyone says that he the beloved, uh, the blessed Apostle Peter was not constituted by Christ our Lord, Prince of all the apostles, invisible head of the church militant, or that he directly, Peter, and immediately received from our Lord Jesus Christ a primacy of honor only and not one of true and proper jurisdiction. Let him be anathema. If you deny the papacy of Peter, you are cursed. You are cursed. So if you say that the Pope is not the successor of Peter, you are also cursed, says Ott. Here is another test of biblical fidelity that the Roman Catholic system fails utterly. No student in the New Testament would deny that Peter was important. He is important. Important apostle, leader, spokesman for the Twelve, the top of all four lists of the, of the Twelve. He's always at the top. He, uh, he was a spokesman. No one would want to call him Holy Father or Holy Anything. He was weak and selfish and sinful and cowardly and unfaithful. He may have been in Rome. He may have died in Rome, but there's no evidence. They say he went to Rome, pastored a church in Rome, died in Rome, is buried in Rome. St. Peter's is supposed to be built where he was buried. There's no evidence for that at all. One thing is certain, he never pastored a church in Rome, if he ever went there. How do you know that? Well, Paul wrote Romans in the year 56, made no reference to Peter. If Peter was in Rome, there was already a church there. If Peter was the pastor of the church in Rome, why doesn't he refer to Peter? And he greets a whole bunch of people in chapter 16. He just keeps greeting one after another, after another, after another. It would be pretty serious to overlook Peter. When Paul was later in prison in Rome, In the year 60 to 62, he wrote four letters, and he included in those letters all who came to him, never mentions Peter. In his last letter, 2 Timothy, written in the year 64 or about that, he gives greeting to ten people in Rome, not Peter, not Peter. By the way, Peter was never called to the Gentiles anyway, Galatians 2, 7 and 8. You might want to look at that for just a minute. Galatians 2, 7 and 8, he says, I had been entrusted, Paul says, with the gospel to the uncircumcised, to the Gentiles, just as Peter had been to the circumcised. Peter was never called to pastor a Gentile congregation to take the gospel to the Gentiles, never. Galatians chapter 2 talks about Verses 11 to 14, when Peter came to Antioch, Paul had to oppose him to his face because he stood condemned because of his terrible, terrible compromise. It was he who denied the Lord, as you know. It was he who disobeyed the Lord. It was he who was cowardly. By the way, the head of the Jerusalem church, you might think at least Peter would be the head of the Jerusalem church, but he's not. According to Galatians chapter 2 and Acts chapter 15, the head of the Jerusalem church was James, was James, not Peter at all. There's, there's no indication whatsoever that Peter had anything to do with the city of Rome. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul uh, 
addresses the factions in the Corinthian church. He says, some of you say, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas or Peter, I of Christ. Now, he, he doesn't sort Peter out. He doesn't make any great thing of him at all. In fact, he makes it very clear that none of these people are particularly significant. They're not the ones who deserve the credit for the work of God. Go over to chapter 3. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed. I planted, Apollos watered, God was causing the growth. It's a very um, low-key way to treat yourself. He doesn't give any elevation to anybody. Furthermore, Paul went to Rome to preach, and in Romans 15, 20, he says, I aspired to preach the gospel not where Christ was already named. If Peter had been there and planted a church, then that would not be true. He didn't go where somebody else had been. If Peter was already the bishop of Rome, why would Paul want to go there and, and strengthen and establish that church? In 1 Peter, let's hear from Peter himself. 1 Peter chapter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, that's all an apostle of Jesus Christ. He introduces himself as nothing more than that, not the apostle, not the head of the church. First Peter 5, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder, as your fellow elder. I'm just one of you. I'm just a partaker of the glory to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God. Exercise oversight, not under compulsion, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, not for money, but with eagerness. Not as, here it comes, verse 3, lording it over those allotted to your charge. Boy, there's a direct hit at the papacy. We're just fellow elders. Don't ever lord it over. Peter himself actually taught against the priesthood of which, of course, the papacy is the highest place. First Peter 2, 5, he says, um, you are living stones. You are built up a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. This is what we know as the priesthood of believers. Down in verse 9, you are a chosen race. You are a royal, pri a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. There's no priesthood but the priesthood of believers. And by the way, Peter completely disappears after Acts 15, completely. But in spite of all of this, the Roman Catholic Church affirms that Peter was the first pope, the head over the whole church, and the author of papal succession. <laughs> 